let's talk about self-motivation, about kindling the passion of young students and allowing them to pursue an interest not typically covered in class. Because, I don't know, it seems to me that all that high schoolers will remember after you know some classes is the Pythagorean theorem, and that... Uh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Yes. <laughs> My case in point. But our next speaker is the epitome of a creative mind, not constrained by the common standard of knowledge held among youth. With one YouTube video alone, he has racked up more than 75,000 views. And it's all about hypnosis. Please welcome a senior from San Francisco's University High School, Stephen Pavlitz. I've had more trouble getting people out of hypnosis than I've had getting them under hypnosis. This is mainly because of what I've been calling the Patrick incident. I hypnotized one of my friends, Patrick, in front of a small audience. It was spring break, we were walking around the cruise ship we were on, doing the normal hypnosis things. He thought he was... <laughs> he thought he was a lion. The audience were his cubs. Anytime anyone got near them, of course, he'd circle around. And... The night was going on, we were getting ready to get him out of hypnosis, go to bed, it was obviously past 12. <laughs> and so, we were walking by a pool. One of my audience members suggests, why don't you have him jump in the pool? That'll get him out of hypnosis. I said, no, that's mean. And they said, yeah, but you could have him dunk his head in the water. It seemed like a good idea at the time, so I go over to my friend Patrick and I say, hey, Patrick, wouldn't it be really fun to dunk your head in the water? And he says, yeah. <laughs> you should go over and put your head in the water. Yeah. <laughs> and he walks up to the water, gets down on his knees, puts his head in the water, and I think it was about when the water got up to his ears, that he realized this wasn't fun anymore, that he snapped out of hypnosis, that he popped up, looks over, makes eye contact with me, and goes, you! <laughs> Chases me around the pool about half a dozen times while I'm yelling back apologies, among other things. The reason I like telling these stories is because that is by far the worst experience I've had with hypnosis. Every other time has been more enjoyable for myself, for everyone else involved. I think this is because hypnosis is inherently relaxing and people carry around too much stress day to day. Right now I bet you got a lot of aches in your bones and joints from worrying about everything. <laughs> hypnosis can get that away from you. And to demonstrate, don't worry, I'm gonna, I'd like everyone to just sit up really straight and with me take one really deep breath in. Just by doing that, you'll feel like 5% better. Now think of someone going under hypnosis, breathing in deeper than you were for 15 minutes or longer, laying down comfortable while a hypnotist such as myself is walking them through mental relaxation exercises. You feel a cool, soothing liquid metal start to fill your feet, weighing them down leaving them in a deeper state of pure calm and peace than you've ever felt. Even the people who don't get under hypnosis, I snap my fingers, tell them to stand up, and they're not hypnotized. The first thing they say is, that's the most relaxing thing I've done in months. People really like it. In fact, the only people who don't enjoy hypnosis are the people who vehemently deny that it's real. I can understand arguing over the subtleties of is it a conscious state of mind or people more asleep, but the big picture of people becoming more suggestible and relaxed is medically accepted. Therapeutic hypnotists use hypnosis to do things that just help people quit smoking. They do this by using hypnosis's suggestibility. It makes people more suggestible. They'll be willing to accept that they're a lion, or that it'll actually feel good to dunk their head underwater. But more useful is that they'll be able to make an association between cigarettes and celery. And after a couple sessions of hypnosis, three or four, 
when they have a craving for a cigarette, they'll then think of a stick of celery and put the stick of celery in their mouth instead. And it makes it easier to make the healthy choice. I really respect therapeutic hypnotists and the good work that they do helping people improve their lives. But that's not where I spend most of my time. <laughs> I spend most of my time on stage hypnosis, entertaining audiences of two people or 20 people with uh, Patrick and other friends. <laughs> and one of the biggest questions I get before, during, and after hypnosis, well, not after, is how do people remember, or what do they remember about hypnosis? I recently hypnotized, like two or three days ago, one of my friends, and I recorded his process of remembering what happened. The last thing that happened was I was in a bubble and I lied down in the bubble. That's the last thing I remember, at least. Uh, oh, it was like a staircase or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I, it's all coming back. I remember this. There was, um... It was like a staircase and there was like dim lights at the bottom and then like you had to walk down it. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't remember what was before that. How did the staircase feel? It was concrete. I don't know why I know that. It, it just, mine was concrete. And you could see the remarkable detail he remembers just after, this was minutes after he got up out of hypnosis. <laughs> People aren't going to forget everything and become a secret agent when you say chicken. Or snap your fingers enough times. <laughs> Another big question I get is, how'd you learn hypnosis? I learned by watching a YouTube video. <laughs> Practicing on my own. And then I found some friends who for some reason were willing to let me hypnotize them. <laughs> and the first time I tried it, it didn't work. Everyone was very relaxed, they enjoyed the experience, but no one got under. But the second time, it did work. Third time, not as well. Fourth time, it worked better. Like anything, you get better with practice. By practicing the induction script on your own. These are the things you say, the liquid metal filling your feet. You practice saying that for 20, 30 minutes at a time. I want everyone in the audience, one more time, just take a deep breath in and sit up and a deep breath out. The longer you have people do that, take deep breaths in, and relax themselves, and be relaxed by the sound of your voice, the better things are going to go. So if your first time trying hypnosis, you spend 20 minutes going through the script, and reading, and having them breathe, that's not too long. The big point I want to get across about hypnosis is it's not something that Bond villains can do, and that you can't. I learned by watching a YouTube video. You can learn by just trying it out with your friends. But it's easiest to learn from other people. And so I want all of you just to think of a single question you have about hypnosis. It could be, when's the best time of day to hypnotize someone? Hold it in your head, and then when you get home, Google search it. There's so much free information out there about hypnosis. There's so many funny videos of people hypnotizing people on the streets. If you have like, even a slight interest in hypnosis, I promise you there's some really entertaining content, even if you don't want to learn it yourself. But you could learn it yourself, because the basic pieces of it are simple. I've had dozens of really positive experiences with hypnosis, and I'd love for all of you to get to experience this cool psychological phenomenon for yourselves. One more deep breath in, 